Today we have with us CPM State Secretary Mamad Selim, uh, congratulations Mamad Selim and we extend our welcome wish to you. So, impending panchayat elections are starting in the uh, state for uh, in a couple of days. What is the importance of the three-tier panchayat system in the lives of the rural people? Once left front government came into being in 1977, then Jyoti Basu himself, none other than Jyoti Basu, said that the government will be run not only from writers building, there is a state secretariat, but there will be many secretariat in the districts and the uh, peop poor people, the marginal section, the, the, the far flung areas, they will have their own government, that is panchayat. Later on it was, uh, it has become a panchayat institution. It's a three tier panchayat system because we, from the beginning the left was working for and asking for more power to the states to prevent over centralization, real kind of federalism. So whatever the power is there, some power will be given from center to the state. But state will not uh, sit with that. The state power will be then further devolved. So it's a devolution of power, both financial and personal, to panchayati ras system, to the local bodies in urban areas, municipalities, corporations. And in panchayats, the three tier systems, the district, they will have an own government that is Jila Parishad, then at the block level is Panchayat Samiti and then at the village level there is Gram Panchayat or Gaon Sabha. It's not only elected representatives of Panchayat but uh, not only Pradhan and uh, Vice Chairman, it's more than that. It's a, it's a council in Jila Parishad and members, individual members have rights in various committees. Say for example, the local needs, local planning, uh, local developments, education, health, uh, environment, uh, connectivity, uh, roads, waters, uh, uh, residents, all these will be uh, covered by panchayat. And over the years, more than 50% of the state resources were allocated to the panchayat system. And panchayat will have at least twice, a statutory, twice a general body meeting of all the electorates. So it's a Gaon Sabha. So na Lok Sabha, na Vidhan Sabha, sabse bada Gaon Sabha. That's the real empowerment of the people and power to the people. In Bengal, this was successful because of the land reform also. So the, whatever land was concentrated to the, in the hands of the landlords, it was redistributed. So the land was taken without compensation and through Operation Burga and distribution of uh, uh, small plots for cultivators. Uh, this is how uh, the real empowerment, financial and economy, economic and social, cultural as well as political, administrative, that restructuring. Uh, then e electorate also, uh, particularly the voting age brought down to 18 years instead of 21. Later on it was uh, so for all India and the assembly and parliament was accepted but first it's introduced. Women's reservations, uh, SCST, OBC's reservations. So now more than 50 percent are women folks. This is how uh, the, the people got their own uh, governments at their own steps and that's why the stake is so high. Uh, so people want to control that uh, local bodies so, uh, through that. Uh, so instead of governance, instead of ensuring participatory democracy, now it has become a tool for controlling the rural masses. What role has the left played in establishing and successfully running the system? From the beginning, if you see, even as in 77 the government came, left front government, 78 uh, panchayat was formed and within months there was a devastating flood. Now you see in what is happening in Assam. So the newly elected panchayat bodies together with the people and the government at the top, they all uh, just uh, started serving to the people, rescuing, rehabilitation, rebuilding. So people have seen how the government can work successfully with the involvement of the local self-government and uh, with the uh, people's initiative. So it's a, uh, then uh, the land reform also could not have been possible without this Panchayatira system. Uh, other government institutions uh, also started through working through that uh, Panchayat level. So as I told you already, then after constitutional amendment throughout the country, uh, it was com made compulsory that devolution of power to the uh, lower, uh, strong, lower tier. In that case, throughout the country we see the tendency in post-independence India was over concentration of power.
in the hands of few. Even now, the greatest challenge in the democracy is that over concentration of power in the hands of a few. In the name of party, in the name of family, in the name of coterie, in the name of some, some undisclosed organizations. So from behind they pull the strings. So here is a real empowering the people. So after, during the entire period of 34 years of left rule, every five years we had this election regularly. Now you have to go to the court to have this election. You have to uh, go, to, uh, to, uh, go, go to the streets. On the streets, you have to demand for election because, uh, be it at the central government or the state government, they want this concentration of power. So that's the difference between the left kind of politics and rightist politics. The rightist means over concentration of power, resources, money, or land, whatever it may be, and left means be it education, uh, be it uh, the political administrative power, be it cultural capital or uh, financial capital uh, or land. It has to be, they will be redistributive uh, and you have to distribute to those who don't have. What are the issues in this round of election? What are the teams in BJP? They are also pitching in this election. Yes. So yes. what are the main issues? Uh, the, for the left, the main issue is, you know, for last several years, huge level of corruption from top to bottom. And when the highest, uh, you know, uh, level of uh, involvement is there. So uh, this appointment in the education, uh, in this Avas Jojana, these housing projects, uh, then roads connectivity, construction of roads, or whatever facilities or schemes are there. Actually, during UPO 1, we fought for this 100 days work. We wanted for 200 days, but at least for that time being, 100 days were ensured. There is Manrega. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi National that Rural Employment Guarantee Act was there. But here, there is all round corruption. Those who require to have jobs, they don't have the cards. Those who are having cards, they are not getting the jobs. Those who are good doing the jobs, they are not getting, they are being paid. And those who uh, are some uh, else are having that. So it's a corruption, cut money all around. So the fight is against the corruption. And this corruption is not possible without the involvement of these uh, culprits, uh, the, 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 the goons. So it's a, it's, it's a nexus between this uh, corruption and the, the, the goons. So it's a fight to re, re, re reoccupy panchayat, uh, regain panchayat, it's a people's angle. So we have given this call for fight against these corrupt and criminals and regain this uh, panchayat for the people, by the people. So people on the streets, because the, the state agencies or the central agencies, they fail to ch check this corruption. From Narda, Sarda to till date, this uh, uh, highest scams everywhere. So in that case, we want people to be aware, people to be active and people to participate. That's how we have built up this. Uh, for last one year, first we said Chor Dharo, Jail Dharo. But who will catch the thieves? Because I, Central Security Forces is guarding those thieves who went to the BJP. The State Security Forces is guiding, guarding those thieves who are still with the Tiramul Congress. So there is insecurity, all around insecurity, not only for the minorities, not only for the women, for the tribals, for the SCs, for the OBCs, the children, and the, for all those uh, well-meaning people who want justice. So in that case, it's now all combined. Then you said, uh, uh, let the uh, village awaken. So, Gram Jaga, Chor Tara. Once the villages uh, come out together, this could have happened earlier also. But because of this, uh, Mamta brought BJP and RSS kind of politics here. So, both the Hindu and com uh, Muslim communists, they wanted to divide the people, not only on the basis of religion or mosque or temple or church or Gurdwara. They started dividing people on the basis of language, caste. Uh, say uh, the various subgroups, what's happening in Manipur, you have seen that. So, pitching one section of people against another. So, utilizing this in the name of identity politics or social engineering. So, that's why the people could not come together. And left's role is to get them united. So, left also got un uh, uh, weakened because there was all around attack. Uh, you know, falsely implicated, our, our comrades were falsely implicated in thousands. Uh, they're jailed. They were ousted from houses, uh, there were a lot of, you know, imposing fines, uh, their livelihoods were at stake. So it took some time to rebuild the uh, network and now the, once they left, hit the streets, 
so people are coming together and the communal forces also is receding so that ch one challenge is against the communal forces another challenge is the corrupt people and third is the criminals of both sides uh, they come together so we have to fight against bjp and trinamool and it's not only the cpim or the left left front is there intact more unity is there but other than those uh, left front partners there are other left parties so we have got them all around and not only the left parties but there are some other secular forces democratic forces including congress isf and many other small small groups social groups political groups they have also got united and that's how we can we are able to put up this challenge uh, collectively against this bjp and tenamol this issue came through the role uh, since uh, 2011 uh, in detecting the si system there there has been enormous violence in the state in the elections how do promise to tackle the violence is it since the inception of tmc the, the most uh, you know uh, corrupt the reactionary sections within the congress they in fact came out of congress and formed this to go with the bjp so with the help and training of rss this this a violent means they took and it was not enough, so they, they even inducted Maoist, you know, Kishanji's episode. So it's not from 2013, even before Mamta Banerjee came to power, they, they started this violence. That's why the violence started in Panchayat election in 2003, in 2008, and that's how the, the, the graph of the uh, violence in Bengal electoral elections and the graph of this Tiramun's electoral success, you will see it's almost together. And that's why now the people are against this TMC as well as against this violent kind of politics. So we, we ask the State Election Commission and that's the demand to hold this uh, election peacefully and uh, neutrally so that people can vote. There are uh, villages after villages where villages will be able to cast their vote maybe after 10, 12 years. So it's a huge challenge for us to show the ballot papers to them, to take them to the ballot uh, polling booth. And you see how violence took place even during the uh, first day of nomina filing nominations. So you declare election on the one hand, and other hand, you, you are not prepared, but your goons are prepared. So the, the bureaucrats are not prepared, the electoral uh, election commission is not prepared, the police force is not prepared. And they, day one, they started violent you know, uh, resistance to uh, those who went to for filing nominations. In fact, we lost the 21-year-old young student leader, uh, Mansur Alam at Chopra. And in that particular blot, there's a case of study, not a single opposition candidates were allowed to file nominations. And it's not only in Chopra, but there are, say, uh, more than a dozen uh, uh, blocks out of 300 plus blocks where uh, not a single uh, nominations were allowed at the village panchayat level or a panchayat summit level. But somehow uh, left could, uh, we are preparing, because since we are preparing for long, so we could manage to submit our nominations, but still at least around 5 to 7 percent uh, seats in a panchayat summit or Gamsa level, where people were prevented not to come out. Now the cases are coming out when TMC in bulk deposited the nominations, disregarding the uh, provisions. On the other hand, uh, our uh, nominations, which were not allowed to file, once it is filed, it was rejected on fl fl flimsy grounds. And sometimes they have tempered the uh, document, that is when the High Court has pointed out, and a CBI inquiry, no, never before in the local body election, CBI election uh, has to conduct any uh, inquiry, because this, uh, the, the court's argument is the state government machinery has tempered this, so how can they inquire into it? So it's a total, you know, uh, uh, none, no confidence on this uh, election machinery or election commission. Despite that, when we ask for more forces, that's a, to ensure the security for the electorates, for the uh, workers, for the voters, and particularly the uh, those personnel, poll personnel, they are demanding. But the, 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 from High Court to Supreme Court, the Election Commission itself and the state government went to the court to prevent the deployment of forces. We want forces because to assure the people that they can come and they can freely cast their vote whoever they like. But here is the government which is not ensuring 
and you can see the drama they asked for 22 companies when they instructed with the court and overnight it came uh, now became 822 and even when they're demanding 822 uh, the, the central government is saying they cannot provide more forces not even half the number that means both the BJP and Tinamul first they never wanted to have this election they wanted to straight go to the parliament election because of their success in 19 or 21, they want to carry that flavor. So they don't want to face the electorate in 2023. So that's why we said we, we, we challenge them that hold this election. Now they went to the court to prevent that. BJP went to the court first in the first round. Supreme Court did not allow that. Now the state government, the governor and the BJP and Tiramol, all of them are trying to uh, their best to, to prevent election to take place but people are in a mood to teach them lesson and we are ge gearing up what are the implications of this in the 2024 Lok Sabha election that's of course because when people get united and if they can they're able to restore democracy to some extent at the grassroots level there are areas where for 10 years the, the, the leftists were not allowed to go for more than 12 years, the students are not allowed to go to uh, have their organizations in the school, colleges, universities. Uh, the, the workers are not allowed to have the trade unions. Uh, the, the farmers are not allowed to, even those who are having patta, are not allowed to till their uh, land. Uh, the, the fisher folk were not allowed to uh, fish in the ponds. So now once that uh, some uh, rights are restored, so now people, uh, of course, will uh, unite themselves to snatch this power from these rightist elements because Bengal from the tradition from this uh, from the freedom struggle is left oriented so all rightist forces got together to oust this left so okay win or defeat is the part of the game but once the left front government was defeated this entire rightist force came down heavily to destroy the leftist network so now we are building that network, we are mobilizing our people and people have also now, uh, now regaining the confidence on left. What are the left promises and the manifesto? It's only the, uh, the left front has issued their manifesto. You will not find any, any manifesto or that kind of thing from the BJP or Tirumal till now. Because whatever, whenever left goes to the people, we go with some uh, specific uh, you know, uh, program. And this is not CPIM, but it's a left front. And in that case, first is we want to uh, stop these corrupt practices in the Panchayatira system. Second is the democratic rights. It can it have to be expanded. And then decentralization of power that we did. So more power to the Panchayats uh, is, is now over uh, bureaucratization. So we have to again go back to the elected representatives and people's power. So with every six months, the panchayat will be bound to hold the, the, the villagers meeting and all schemes which are being implemented. Uh, there, uh, the, the one uh, factor is that to root out that corruption, it has to be in more transparency. In that case, everything should be shared with the people. Uh, it's not only the elected representatives that they will do. We have learned from our lessons also. Uh, thirdly, the, the rural economy is in sample. So we have to rebuild this rural economy. The, 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 the uh, agriculture community, they are not getting the right kind of prices for their producers. We, earlier, panchayat used to procure that. Now that system has done. So now the panchayat system will uh, be on the side of the tillers uh, for their procurement of a, a inputs at the same time uh, for uh, selling the products. Uh, laborers, they will have their rights, particularly migrant laborers. There, since there is no industrialization taking place for last one decade and no works uh, in the villages, so there is a huge internal migration. According to the Constitution of India, the, the, the uh, government of India is mandated to take care of this internal migrants but they are not taking. We have seen during the COVID period also. So the red volunteer work for them. The, the people, the, the leftists all over the country, they stood for them. So now these migrant laborers, which are in, in close now, so for, we have to ensure that one, their safety, their security, their family safety and security, the, the education of their children, uh, the, the, the panchayat should look after in their absence, their interest in the, in the villages. 
at the same time we will build cottage and small scale industries uh, where uh, again uh, revamping the agriculture to better irrigation system crop diversification so that uh, the people may not uh, they will not be required to go out instead that there is some kind of self employment and employment generation program in the rural areas uh, I, I, then women safety children safety security the police force is now work only uh, uh, under the instruction of the ruling party so it must be reformed the situation must be changed so the uh, and will the bengal rural areas were never under the influence of communalists not even their partition days but now this communal divide is there so we'll again unite these people they they must come together the environment be it physical environment be it the water bodies the the trees forest that has to be protected at the same time there is the quality uh, relationship that that we in bengali we say police samaj so this is a rural community so it's a, a traditionally uh, they they used to there will be no difference between caste and creed and la- gender and uh, language or uh, religion so that we again and for that you have to promote a culture scientific temperament that's what panchayat can play an heavy role in fact uh, during left regime uh, panchayat was given entrusted the job for uh, basic educations the uh, sarva shiksha mission was there uh, then the this ssk msk uh, shishu shiksha kendra madhyamik shiksha kendra these are all stopped now so that we have to again revamp there should not be any out of school children as a uh, 100% enrollment no illiteracy these are all work program and it's not hoax we did it successfully but now uh, it is undone so whatever has been undone in the rural areas for last 12 years we will again try to bring it to the track again so about the welfare schemes uh left has also promised some welfare schemes what is that promise the whole world knows this welfare schemes came because of this socialist movement the the the, the, the establishment the government the rulers must think of those who cannot survive and for that matter be it the field of education health women children uh, uh, disabled elderly people uh, uh, farmers those who are in trouble it's not that government should work government should work the panchayat must work for those who need them so these would be need based there are many welfare schemes which now being sold off as mamta's scheme or modi's scheme these are government schemes these are panchayat schemes we fought during upa government that at least these the, the central assisted schemes must be transferred to the panchayati raj system and that's how uh, the schemes under 27 ministries got transferred to the local bodies but there is no monitoring by the central government that's why so much of corruption and state government got this as a uh, you know lurgis for their own people so we are not against these schemes rather we want to implement those schemes properly and weed out corruption and uh, uh, all these schemes be it mid day meal icds rationing public distribution system uh, uh, unemployment you know assistance elderly people's assistance women's assistance these are all left concept this is the left government started and that time right is used to criticize us but there are section of people with this clear the serious economic crisis unemployment price rise and inflation uh, you have to make people survive so uh, subsistence allows you have to give them and this is what we ask for uh, unnecessarily modi advertise with his photograph that is a modi scheme mamta advertise herself to with her photograph this har schemes पैसा हमारा आपका नहीं किसी का बाप का पीपल गिव दिस टैक्स एंड द गवर्नमेंट और पंचायत और द म्यूनसिपालिटीज और सेंट बीट स्टेट और सेंटर दे स्पेंड इट सो इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द क्वालिटी ऑफ द पॉलिटिक्स द इडियोलॉजी एंड द ऑनेस्टी ऑफ द पीपल इन्वॉल्व वेदर दे स्पेंड प्रॉपरली और दे टेक दिस करप्ट रूट तो हाउ डू सी रेजिस्टेंस इन द पंचायत इलेक्शन माइंड इट द लेटर आर the letter r stands for revolution the letter r stands for red 
that's what red volunteers did during entire corona period even now they are on guard thirdly the r is for resistance r is for reoccupy r is for you know rapid actions so mamta is afraid of because it was field day for the goons to snatch the rights of the, the democratic rights of the people but when people get united they resist now she is saying why resistance is there but why people will allow the thieves to run their reeds why the goons will take over the booths why the police officers or the say, section of bureaucrats they will loot the counting centers that's how for last one year we tried slowly slowly build up the mood of the people the confidence of the people the organization of the people and this combined force who are opposed to the loot of modi and didi now they are coming together they will resist all kind of mal practices be it in the government or panchayat as in the form of corruption be it in the form of uh, you know uh, wrong uh, uh, electoral politics using muscle power or money power be it the wrong doings of the bureaucrats or the police jyoti bose used to say is people who says the last word